this hardware cannot get more efficient than that. There are definitely some quirks in the Terramaster OS. I do not know why they would do such a thing. Docker Compose works and that completely changes my opinion. Hey there Geek Army, Anand here. Those of you who have been following my channel know that I like to run a simple energy efficient home lab. Partly because let's be honest, my wallet weeps every time I turn on a light here in Switzerland. So the newer NAS devices with power efficient CPUs, integrated GPUs and multiple drive bays have grabbed my attention. When the guys at Terramaster approached me to do a review of the brand new Terramaster F4425 Plus NAS, I was intrigued because I wanted to learn more myself. Yes, Terramaster did share the unit for free, but they have had zero say in what I'm about to say here in this video. I'm not a hardware expert, so I told them my focus will solely be on its Docker capabilities and they said it's okay. So the initial few minutes of this video, I will focus on the basics and the built-in photos app, but the majority of the focus will be on Docker capabilities, especially being able to manage Docker compost stacks. If you have used Deployer or followed my ultimate Docker media server guides and videos, then you would know that I am a big fan of Docker Compose. And surprisingly, no one has discussed this part in detail when it comes to Terramaster OS. The common theme seems to be to install Portainer or just replace the entire TOS and go with Proxmox or Unraid, but is that really needed? Without further ado, let's jump right into it and find out. Terramaster F4425 Plus is a 4-bay NAS that is positioned to compete directly with mid-range favorites like the Synology DS925 Plus and QNAP TS464. Priced around $1.500, F4425 Plus immediately stands out for having arguably the highest cost performance ratio and leading hardware specification in its price bracket. Major players like Synology and QNAP do not even come close in terms of cost and what you get in terms of hardware for it. Let's dive into what makes this hardware special. Under the hood, the F4425 Plus is powered by an Intel N150 quad core processor that came out earlier this year. This CPU has high efficiency, low power consumption and features an integrated Ultra HD graphics card. The single thread and multi-threaded Passmark scores are only about 1900 and 5500, but with the N150 supporting Intel QuickSync, it should be able to handle multiple 4K transcodes effectively, all at only 6 watts of TDP. This hardware cannot get more efficient than that. Most NASes in this price range or even higher ones, looking at your Synology, ship only with 4 or 8 GB of RAM. The F4425 Plus comes with 16 GB of DDR5 RAM. And of course, it can be upgraded to 32 GB or even possibly more. For connectivity, you get two 5 Gbps Ethernet ports on the rear. This is highly unusual and a significant step up as the 5 Gbps transmission speed is twice that of common 2.5 GBE standard found on competitors. These ports support link aggregation as well, potentially offering up to 10 Gbps of bandwidth. The four 3.5 inch drive base can take drives of up to 30 terabytes for a whopping 120 terabytes of storage. Of course, they can also fit 2.5 inch drives with an adapter. But wait, there's more. The F4425 Plus has not the normal or common two, but three M.2 SSD slots. These slots can be used as storage volume or SSD cache in any combination. While we're at it, let's talk about the RAID. The drives can be RAIDed in multiple ways. Thanks to T-RAID, you can even mix and match drive sizes, just like in most well-known NASes, including Synology. But under the hood, T-RAID is not an entirely proprietary format. Instead, T-RAID operates as a logical layer built on top of standard Linux technologies. The F4425 Plus runs on Terramaster's latest operating system, TOS 6. While still functional and usable, this is where Terramaster lags behind when compared to established players like Synology. 
I have used Synology for seven years now, and DSM is one of the easiest NAS operating systems. In fact, you can combine the stability of Synology DSM OS with F4425 Plus's capable hardware if you want to, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. There are definitely some quirks in the Terramaster OS. I will touch on some of those. But nevertheless, I believe that the ability to use Docker Compose natively, by that I mean command line and not via portainer interface, is a game changer, at least for me. We will look at it in more detail, including a deeper look at TOS. I have to say that compared to my Synology DS918 Plus, which is now seven years old, the TOS interface on F4425 Plus is very responsive. It's like going from dial-up to fiber, and I'm not even exaggerating. Okay, um, maybe a little bit. TOS 6 is built upon a familiar base. It runs on the stable Linux kernel 6.1, and specifically, the underlying system is based on Ubuntu Jammy Jellyfish or 22.04, which is the LTS release. But if you try to manage the system via terminal, you quickly find out that this is a stripped down and intentionally obfuscated operating system. For example, you cannot use the standard apt package manager to update or upgrade packages like you can on Ubuntu. You'll have to use the app center, which we will look at later. There are other quirks like some services being renamed from their standard names, for example, SSH. I do not know why they would do such a thing. Even the way Docker and related packages are installed is quite abnormal. Installing Docker installs a fairly recent version of Docker Engine, but the installed Docker Compose version is not the now standard Docker Compose plugin. So one has to use the older Docker Compose v1 syntax. In real life, what does this mean? If you choose to use Docker Compose natively, you will have to use the Docker hyphen compose command instead of docker space compose as you will see later on. All of these are not necessarily a ding on Terramaster because everything I mentioned also applies to Synology. One thing that was kind of annoying is not having a built-in text editor. Let me explain. There is a text editor in the file manager, but it only auto recognizes and offers to open .txt files. When I tried to open shell scripts or YAML files, there was no edit option in the context menu. And unlike Synology DSM, there is no standalone text editor app for me to manually open unrecognized files. I had to temporarily rename it, edit it, and rename it back. Honestly, renaming a YAML file just to edit it felt less like using a modern NAS and more like I was trying to trick my old Windows 98 PC into running a new game. On the positive side, being new to TOS, one thing I found nice was the pop-ups that introduced me to new possibilities. It was a quick way to become familiar with the ecosystem. But it is great that they included a don't prompt me again checkbox because I can see how this can be annoying for some. Initial setup is done easily by going to tnas.local or the IP address assigned to the NAS. Follow the on-screen prompts and create the initial user. The email verification part did not work for me, but I was able to skip that part easily. One thing to know is that the first user that is created is the root user or administrator. So all the apps that are installed, even Docker containers, will be run by this user. So I would trust only Docker images from well-known developers. By default, Terramaster OS seems to pick the hard drives to install the OS. So if you want the OS to be on the M.2 SSDs, then I suggest completing the initial setup and then plugging in the HDDs. What I would do is to use the two M.2 slots in RAID 1 mirror for OS and apps, and then the third M.2 SSD as balanced cache for the hard drive volume. These M.2 slots can accommodate up to 8 terabytes each. After the initial setup, you get a security assessment, which is great, but also a bit overwhelming for newbies. In the App Center, there aren't as many apps as you would find on a Synology package installer, but more than enough for a normal or a typical user. Many common apps such as Plex, Jellyfin, MB, Aces, WordPress, etc. are already included. In fact, Jellyfin even has a shortcut right in the All Applications menu. The Community App Store is just a repository maintained by one person. 
I'm not sure why Terramaster is linking to it directly from the app center and if or how this person is connected to Terramaster. You would soon hit the five package limit on the free tier before having to pay for a monthly subscription to download more packages. But there is absolutely no need for this in my opinion with Docker and Docker Compose being available. Next, I will briefly touch on the Photos app which Terramaster seems to have put a lot of emphasis on. The Photos app features built-in AI photo recognition. When you upload your bulk photos, Photos app automatically uses AI to identify people, allowing you to reference and find them by name. The identification of objects is significantly better than the previous generations and you can utilize easy filtering based on the metadata the app crawls. You can set up custom sharing options and create unique files and folders based on metadata. With the stock photos I uploaded, I could not get the facial recognition to work. Not sure if there is some kind of limit or minimum requirement that I did not meet. If you guys know or find something, please share with the rest of us in the comment section below. At least it wasn't clear to me that I had to do beyond enabling the facial recognition. The scene recognition however worked very well, but I found no control over the auto created scenes. For example, I could not delete the ones that I did not want. But I found the app to be very responsive, at least with the limited number of photos I tested with it. I will stop with the basics here, I spent more time on it than what I had planned to. But if you're here so far, please do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons. I would greatly appreciate it and it helps my videos rank higher in the YouTube algorithm and helps me grow my channel. There are many subscription options available as well with wonderful benefits. Check those out as well if you want to support my work. Let's move on to Docker capabilities. You can install Docker Manager from the App Center or using the shortcut in the All Applications menu. As noted before, Docker containers will probably run as the root or administrative user, which I'm not a big fan of. I will probably dig further into it over the next few days. The native Docker manager provides a friendly user interface for basic container management, allowing you to install the Docker engine, search for Docker Hub images, download images, and launch new containers easily. When setting up a container, the UI simplifies configuring crucial aspects like defining the persistent volumes to store application data and setting resource limits. You may have to fiddle a bit to get the right permissions for apps like Jellyfin to read and write data. It's like the container is staring you down and asking, are you sure you want to be here? In TOS 6, the Docker Manager also includes projects, which is Terramaster's name for Docker Compose Management, allowing you to define multi-container applications using Docker Compose YAML file. Again, everything I said here is very similar to how Synology does it. You can also install Docker apps using Docker Compose using Portainer's UI, but you will have to install Portainer manually first using the Docker Manager UI. The good thing is apps installed using Docker Compose on Portainer automatically show up under the Docker Manager's project tab. Now, those who have been following me may know that I rarely ever use Portainer. I prefer the native Docker Compose to build and maintain my stack, and I believe it offers better control, portability, and backing up possibilities. This is what I describe in my ultimate Docker Media Server series of guides, and this is the same best practice Deployer follows as well. If you want to know what Deployer is, then be sure to check it out. It automates a lot of tasks related to Docker Home Lab setup, including setting up traffic, Authelia, Authentic, Plex, etc. So let's dive a bit deeper into Docker and Docker Compose. Although the version of Docker installed is quite new, the included Docker Compose plugin is not being installed for some reason. I do not know what the reason behind not including that is. Instead, the original version 1 of Docker Compose is being installed. As I said before, you will have to use docker-compose instead of docker space compose for the docker compose commands. But the version of docker compose installed was quite recent in fact, version 2.25. This setup is quite similar to what Synology does. In fact, following the instructions in my Synology docker traffic guide, I was even able to update the docker compose version to version 2.40.2 which is the latest version at this time. 
Now the Synology guide is being updated right now but with a little bit of Linux knowledge I was able to follow my ultimate Docker media server guide and set up a fully flexible Docker Compose based stack. As a test, I installed Docker Socket Proxy and Dozel using the UDMS series and everything worked perfectly. Docker Compose works and that completely changes my opinion. I was even able to install my Docker Bash aliases to simplify managing my Docker stack using shortcut commands. It gets even better. I was even able to start Deployer, but there were some permission errors, but I'm fairly confident that I can adapt Deployer to automate Docker Home Lab setup on Terramaster Nest. And that will be huge. Let me know in the comment section if you would like me to do a deeper dive into installing and maintaining your Docker stack using Docker Compose on Terramaster NAS. I think I need to wrap this up now, but one final point I would like to discuss is the operating system. I mentioned that the Terramaster OS has improved significantly over the years and is perfectly sufficient for most users, but it can be a bit limiting for advanced users. So it is no surprise that people have combined Terramaster's advanced hardware with custom operating systems such as Proxmox VE, Unraid and TrueNAS. You can even install Synology's DSM operating system on Terramaster NAS and you have yourself a Synology NAS but with better hardware. Now I won't go into the details of how to install these custom operating systems but just know that there is a hidden USB port inside the chassis and you have to disable the TOS boot first option in the BIOS settings. It's like Terramaster built this thing to be safe and the custom OS is the secret treasure map. You could possibly use the other USB ports but I did not try. If you guys know, let me know in the comment section. Of course, do all of these with new SSDs and hard drives if you don't want to lose your data. Personally for me, with the ability to use Docker Compose to manage my stack, I see no reason to use it differently than my current Synology. Use the Terramaster OS to manage just my file server and do everything else on Docker using Docker Compose. Now, if I decide to combine my mini PC and NAS together into one unit, then maybe I might consider replacing TOS with Proxmox and install TrueNAS as a VM for managing the storage server. But I won't make the decision lightly because upgrading Proxmox is not straightforward. For example, a recent upgrade from version 8 to 9 broke GPU pass-throughs with no fix available in nearly two months. Imagine losing your hardware acceleration and everybody that uses Plex going crazy at home. So that is about it everyone. I think Terramaster F4425 Plus is a powerful NAS with better hardware than some of the famous players in the NAS space. But the Terramaster OS has some ways to go in maturing. But for most users, it should not be a showstopper. Combining that with Docker Compose, I would not hesitate to upgrade my old Synology DS918 Plus and it would cost me less than getting a new Synology model that would most likely have less powerful hardware than the Terramaster F4425 Plus. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think of Terramaster or even this review. I rarely ever do reviews on devices, so I would love to hear your feedback. Be sure to like and subscribe. I will see you in my next video. Go Geek Army. Thank you.